This is Shokure Zohei Kyoku, aka Jogomint, and welcome to my let's play of Yorsha Major, an Alchemia story. This is another recommended game from the Ultimate Jam 2021. It is about a story about two people and how they learn to grow with each other. This uh, I this is a blind playthrough, so I have noticed the uh, game page is really interesting, and I'm looking forward to playing the game. So let's start. New game. <clears throat> Damn it. Oh, Wolfie. A really scary Wolfie. It's too rough. We need more main power. H hey, you lot. Back us up. Oh, oh, no way. Aren't you all soldiers? I got paid to dig traps, not fight Diamond. It, is he a stinging Diamond bait at Colm? You deal with it. Those gutless. Hey, it's gonna. <laughs> you want this base stuff, right? Then. It, it didn't work. Uh. Take. This. What? What? You damnable piece! Fall back to the depths you crawl from. <sighs> Ain't that one of the diggers? She's actually beaten it with a shovel. Wait! Look over. Uh, get, get back! Another one. Uh, lie down and die already. These creatures. I will not let you hurt anyone else. <laughs> Who is... What? You're that crazy alchemist. Heh. <laughs> Grr. Just give him one for. Alright. Then. <laughs> okay, I, I, I cannot do that. Oh. Um, I, I, um, my, my battle cry is not really good. Please pretend that I did actually make a good battle cry. Or ignore that. All together. The she bear and the alchemist. <sighs> and the fifth match to the lovely lady of Silver Vale. Damn. Is it really a woman? You and her... They call her the she bear of Silver Vale. They do. Who the hell still comes up with names like that? In this age, day and age. Just look at her. She ain't a woman. She's a bear. That's. I mean, she's really, really manly. She looks quite manly, but she's definitely a woman. And what you just said is an insult to her. I mean, we have feminine woman and we have strong tomboyish woman. Though she doesn't look tomboyish at all, she's just really strong. They're loud. 
Another challenger slid into the seat in front of me. He was a full bearded man with a red alcohol drunk nose like a bright plum. Hell of a sight to wear, Lexi. Strolling to read home now with a diamond hand on your belt. Hmm. They're saying you drew right on the ass of a mayor's desk and forced him to dig out the treasury coins for turning it in. And I love a woman with spunk, you know. If I be ya, promise to. Are you ready? Go. That's six challengers defeated. Rumbling, the bearded man laughed. Russia's chatter filled the air again. No further aim wrestling challengers declared themselves for the moment, and the girls by me turned to chat. I gotta say, someone was looking out for us to have you aside to all drop and swat. You really live in after this. We could use muscle like you, what with all the recent diamond attacks all over the place. Hell, next time we could get you an actual weapon and not a gold old shovel. You're wasted on digging diamond drops, you know. Thank you. I'm needed in my village. You have all the men. And that alchemist? She slew a diamond as well. She'll be more helpful than I will. Oh yeah, crazy old, crazy old Olaine. I don't know. She ain't a real reliable sort, you know. Just wandered into town a couple weeks ago and started doing odd things here and there. Like, I heard she started buying up supplies. Like she's gonna summon an Isham. But Mayor's already got one, and ain't anyone here else here rich enough to pay her, right? Now, what if she's thinking of calling us an Isham to fight the diamond? We sure could use the firepower. Ha! <laughs> you think the lies of us get to born with the elemental folk? She's probably just crazy. Probably can't talk to them anyway. I listened on to the girl's griffin, unwillingly, but also with some curiosity. My village was small. I did not often hear tales of alchemists, the scholars who used the elements to build and fight, or Isham, the elemental fork. Fork, fork. Isham was said to be powerful beings. Who could control the elements with greater skill than even alchemists, but they could only be summoned by complex alchemy, and only the wealthy could afford to hire alchemists to perform summonings. At least in small towns like ours, it was out of question for ordinary folk. The girls' complaints had a joking tone, as if aware of this. Well. I say we were lucky Olaine was passing by. So what the hell was she even doing out in the woods? Where plays to for a stroll with diamond about? But she is an alchemist. Maybe she's searching for her, for her alchemy. Actually, when the diamond attacks on those villages start again, Brookhaven and the other one, Belleville. About a month ago. Why? You don't think maybe she's been going out there summoning the diamond or something? You enormous alchemists are scholars, not some sort of witch of the woods. They began bickering amongst themselves again, losing interest in me. I finally had a moment of peace. Stories about alchemists aside, this tavern. And the town of Bridholm was too loud. I'll come for supplies, and to do some small odd jobs here and there. That was why I had ended up in the forest with a shovel, digging diamond drops. But I would be glad to be on my way back to Silverville. 
though I still had errands to run when my heart fought earnings first. I made enough money by turning in the diamonds bounty that I could return now, rather than stay and work longer. Yes, that was the right choice. Half musing, I picked up the glass tanker that one of the girls had bought me. It was still mostly full of mediocre ale. Nevertheless, letting it go to waste was. Listen up, all you rough and tumble types. Here's a request for your bit of culture for you. A legend from the old times, when men were men and women were bears. The tale of Rigma and the she bear. The handle of the tanker shattered in my grip. The glass tottered to the table and spilled. My apologies, Barkev. For the tanker, thank you for the L. I placed a few coppers on the table, nodded at the suddenly silent room and the girls, and left. Hmm. After the dim tavern, the afternoon sunlight momentarily scorched my eyes. I raised a hand to shame myself and consider the shops I would need to visit. Don't get long enough to get tired of the bad elder. <sighs> Hello, you're the alchemist, Olin. We're getting the crazy old part, are we? You do not seem crazy to me. Thank you for the assistance with the diamond. Hmm. <laughs> I see someone smarter than the knuckleheads in there, and don't mention it. It was just an argument, Baldrick. I cannot do older woman's voice, or <laughs> a Baldrick. You dropped a diamond in his tracks. That, then the alchemist got what can do what I do. I'm just one of the few mad enough to go here and cross here and there with diamond about. I am special, but you, girl, on the other hand, got something about ya. Don't glare at me like that. How about this? I'll make ya a deal. Show me how you live around here, and I'll help ya out with something, alchemically. Hmm? Hooded as she was, I couldn't tell what she was thinking behind her shrill expression. But this was a busy town. There was no reason to be so cautious, and she did not seem to mean any harm. All right. Though I had expected her to demand a tour, Olin simply followed me as I ran my errands. Ursa, good to see you again. What you need this time? Hinges for windows, and a few hand floats need repairing. Have you wheels or oil? Just got in a new batch, actually. I'll let you have the old ones for cheap. Let me go and find them. There, farmer. Didn't expect that. No, a carpenter. These are from my village. Sevavel, a day to the north. I will return there soon. The tinkerer returned shortly, and I busied myself backing away the tools he handed me. That doll, how much? Oh, just go and take it. I heard about a diamond thing. I can't. It's the least I can offer, and it's for a grown man's girl, right? He's out with a caravan right now, but I'll tell him you stopped by, and we're looking now for his kid. He'll be grateful. Thank you. I'll buy more next time. Then. The shopkeep waved us up cheerfully. Olin looked thoughtful. So, not a husband, eh? A brother? I have no kin. Sorry. Yeah, taking care of a lover's kid, Stan. 
She did not look sorry. No, not that either. Silvervale is a poor village. Village, the mines ran dry years ago. Many men leave to seek their fortunes elsewhere. Their families stay to till the land. Since I am one of the few free to travel without family ties, I take work sometimes and read read home to help those who remain. Hmm. I see. Ursa and、uh, the alchemist. The apothecary looks displeased to see Olin. She grins and ignores him. Anyway, the usual then, Ursa. Yes, the shelves and potes, and a few bags of bandages. Village dogs ran short after a couple wolves attacked. The man bustles off. I look at Olin. You know him? I just gave him a few tips of the tray. He weren't too pleased to hear he'll be using the wrong herbs for years. Elementally speaking, is that so? His sobs help help with the villagers' aches and pains. I do not see. Oh, I am saying he's a bad herbalist. He could just be. Better. It ain't his fault though. Not enough knowledge about the elemental nature of things to get passed out of the big cities, where the alchemy schools are. So out here, people are still doing things the old way with the Ramers Herbal Diaries. It still works, but could be better. For some reason. Olin looked disgruntled about this. You've visited the big cities. Feel bad. Seen all the people already. Oh, and all the Asian too. Guess oh, after a while though. The Asian. You know what Asian are? A little. Yet you two talking about Asian. The apothecary had finally returned with armfuls of supplies. As I paid him, he continued, sounding determined to show up Olin in something. Ishim spirits from the elemental splints got discovered twenty-five years ago by, uh, right, the master alchemist Talarian. There's four elements making up the world. So there's one type of Asian for each element. Fire types call fire. Earth types move the ground. Air types are flighty and all that. And oh yeah, they have to be linked to a human or something. Born dead or they disappear. Anyway, Master Alchemist can call Asian to do the bidding, but it takes actual skill and a worthy heart, or so I hear. He glared at Olin as he said so. How that for a little information? <laughs> well, gotta be impressed. The abbot, abbot Hickory rolled his eyes. We ain't all high and mighty here in Reedhorn, but don't act like we're all uneducated bumpkins. Anyway, come back soon, you hear yourself. But hopefully not too soon. By the time I had completed all of my tasks and read home, the sun had begun begun to set. Olin had nevertheless followed me the whole way, making the odd comments here and there. That's everything. I think our deal is complete. Hmm, is that so? And you'll be wanting a reward, I expect. Yes, but what do you plan to do? I've already bought everything I need. Olin turned to fix a strangely sharp eye on me. Yeah, would you like to burn an issue of your own? Uh. You're decided, Anne.
Yes. Ollie's end room was full of odds and ends, including a strange pattern drawn on the floor. Ollie had pulled a man-sized collador out of, out from somewhere. After her astonishing proclamation, it had taken her several minutes to convince me of her sincerity, and then she had brought me here, chattering about each in the whole way. Now I know. Now I now knew a little more about the four kinds of elemental folk. They inhabited clay bodies, put command their elements in various ways. And each had their own skills. That was simple enough to understand. But I still do not know why you would bestow this honor on me. I am a carpenter from Silver Vale. We have nothing to offer you but dry up mines and rocks. Surely there are wealthier folk who. Oh, you have offered me plenty already, girl. Been a long time since I had so much fun. What elements is your fancy then? Absolutely nothing about my errands could have been fun for her. But she did not look as if she was lying. There was nothing else to do but to go along. Earth, as your say. Each of my earth are sturdy and powerful, and can build walls of solid stone as easily as moving hay. Silverville lacks protection against diamond. Diamond. <laughs> We would welcome a defender of the village. Mm-hmm. Is that so? But girl, you mark my words now. Each of them are living, thinking beings like you and I. They are neither servants or tools to be discarded. The bond between human and each of them is paramount. Only those who would cultivate it deserve the blessing of the elementals. Will you treat the each of them well, regardless of what it does for you? Yes, I will honor the. Isham and care for it as I would my own kin. I will ask it nothing I would not ask of myself. Do I call it Isham or Isham? Regardless of what comes, I will not forget my duty. Well, say, stand over there then. I stepped into a circle drawn in the garden. Olin, hold the play door over to the other side. What must I? Close your eyes. Concentrate. I'm starting the summoning right now. Focus slowly on your own words. That which you most wish for. Nothing else. My own. What? Call to the elemental planes. Silently. Show them your true desires, and an Ishim will answer. My true desires, the protection of my village and the folk there. There is nothing else. What else could there be? Ah! Oh my! Wow! A strange and amused tone in Olen's voice caused me to open my eyes. Hello, dear beautiful. Super, super beautiful man, who is definitely not a Earth Asian. <laughs> super beautiful, yes, yes. Um, this is also um why I I feel he would、um, be suitable for Ursa because. You know we have a, a strong, independent woman and a gentle, sweet、uh, gentleman. Ah, <laughs>、uh, you must be the one whose voice I heard. 
The figure standing there in the middle of the circle looked human in all respects, aside from a pair of golden yellow eyes. But he was slim and elegant, almost frail, and the blue hair flowed like waves around a lined, smiling face. He was clearly no earth elemental. I am Uribel, from the plains of water. I am honored to make your acquaintance. May I ask your name? I look at Olin, who only looked innocently back. Had she promised too much, or was she actually as mad as the guards had thought? She had told me herself. Ishim and Water were placed, calm, soothing beings who did not enjoy fighting. Men or Ishim, Ishim, Silverbell could not be defended by someone like this. This must have been a mistake. I do not. But something stopped me. Ishim are living, thinking beings like you and I. They are neither servants or tools to be discarded. I will honor the Ishim and care for it as I would my own kin. I am Ursa of Silverville. E E E Isa E Ursa. The pleasure is mine. Uribel smiled. Olin grinned toothily at me, and I could only silently grimace at what it was that I had agreed to. Chapter Two: The Ishim of Water. Oh my! This is wonderful. So this is the physical room. It is so different from how it appears within the blends of water. Oh man, you're so pretty. <laughs> And I see that his hair kind of like moves according to his expression. Rest, oh yeah, Tanger. I am leaning the drip ahead. Come, there is a vendor for rations near the city gate. We'll stock up and then leave for Silverville. It was the morning after Olin Dew, and I was returning to my home village with the supplies I had purchased. But this time I would not be making the trip alone. The Ishim now bonded to me. Uribel would come as well. According to Olin, though he appeared frail, he would have little trouble making the trip like a normal human with food, water, and rest. And since he appeared to be a normal human as well, no one else in the market paid him much heed. Besides, are a couple of curious looks. Yeah, his he he also looks really curious about everything, but all of these objects are first, but they are so different from each other. Why is this red one not like this long one? <laughs> this this. I don't know. It, it it kind of makes me laugh, and if consider our contest, it sounds really weird too. <laughs> that's an apple, and that's a swatch. They are different plants. Ah,、uh, they are distinguished by their origins. Their elements are subtly different as well. I see. I had not realized how little an elemental spirit, newly arrived in our world, would know of anything. Uribel marveled at many things as we walked through the market, including the stone buildings. And though Olin took over explaining, and he seemed a fast learner, I could not shake a feeling of annoyance. This Ishim knew little of the world, and because he was a water elemental, he could not create defenses from earth 
or attack with fire. What could I even ask of him? There was nothing I could rely on him for. I would honor this Asian and protect him, as I promised. But how did I even speak to him? Ah! Uh, uh, I accidentally dropped on the hem of Uribe's robe, traveling along the ground, and he stumbled. I barely managed to grab his hand behind his arm before he fell. Oh, goodness! Thank you. Forgive me. I am not yet used to this form. It's our fault, so my bad. My bad. I'll be more careful. I realized, even though Urbe's entire body was made of clay, he was still quite light. Even his arm felt more different and no less warm than a human's. But Olin was smirking. I let go of him hastily and cast about for something to say. Oh, oh! All it seems like she knows something. She definitely knows something, or、uh, she could be like me, who is watching this with a really, really great grin on my face. Because ship worthy, ship ship. I smell a romance or kind of interaction. Your clothes, they are too long for walking. And then, will this do?、Uh, he has simply shortened the hem of his robe in a flash of light. Thankfully, no one else in the market seemed to have noticed. Hmm. I suppose I should have told you. Asians can change their appearance and clothes if they need to. I see. Yes, that works. Uribel looked relieved. We kept talk walking, but I found myself so lost in thought. I really knew nothing of Isham. We finally left the gates of Reed Home behind us, but Olain stopped a little beyond the bridge, and we turned to each other. You're leaving then. Olain flashed the same. Inscrutable smile at me. I somehow knew she would turn down my offer, but I had to try. Silver Veil could use an alchemist's help, especially one so powerful. There must be something we could provide you in return. Oh, I fancy a little bit more wandering around the area first. I think I am not got much keeping me anywhere like you do. And you'll be fine. You have the pleasant of water out, eh? Yes. Please allow me to be up a in her place. Hmm. I was not sure how he could be, but I did not say that out loud. I looked at Olain one more time, trying to collect my thoughts. Then. Actually, any advice could be good. So, as for any last advice about Isham, before you go, is there anything else I should know about Isham, or what I should do for Uribel? Well, now I'm glad you reminded me. You know how to read, I guess. Yes. Simple test. Poetry and the sword are too difficult, but what? Well, it ain't poetry. I hope it'll be of use, though. Here. She handed me a small booklet, emblazoned with the title "Learning and Living Among Asia." Its author was listed as Master Scholar Talarian. I've heard the name before. I recall the apothecary mentioning it. Some useful info from the source itself. The alchemist who discovered it and wrote it. Read up and you should get by fine. Well, I'm taking my leave now. 
Till next time, girl. And good luck to you, my good Asian. And she left as jauntily, jauntily as she appeared, seeming not to have a care in the world. Let's go then. Please lead the way. The road between Reed Home and Silvervale was rough and well drawn. I had walked it many times in the year since I have come to live at Silvervale, but this was the first time I've had a traveling partner. And Uribel seemed inclined to speak as we walked. So, this is the sky of the physical world. Is even grander than I expected. Hmm. Ah, I was simply marveling. There is so much to see that I do not know where to start. The sky is so wide here and filled with air. The grass up on the ground flows with water, which intermingles with the earth below, and fire shines from the sun above us. The elements coexist here so easily, unlike in the elemental planes. It is fascinating. Hmm. I knew, like everyone else, that the world we lived in was built from the four elements of air, fire, water, and earth. But I did not have enough alchemy knowledge to say anything besides that, and I was not alone. Quick with a jibe or an interjection, I realized ruefully that though I hadn't known what to make of her, her oddness had lightened the mood.、Hmm? Her? Was he not a?、Um, was Uribel not male? Um, or is 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 she talking about herself, or like Olin? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I I got confused for a moment there. So so she's talking about Olin. Okay. With her gone, I did not feel up to keeping up the old conversation, but Uri Bell continued as she, we walk, seeming not to mind my silence. And the humans we have seen, they are so different from Akram. That is, my people in the plains of water. How so? They choose such different activities and clothing. Some carry spears, others push carts, and others stand and call to others to see their items. Do they all wish to live separate lives? Did Isham not? Although it was a strange topic of conversation, I felt a little curiosity. Those are different professions. The ones with spears are guards. They defend the town. The others sell and buy food and goods. Humans all have their own skills and things they do to help others. That's normal for us. I see. As long as it helps others. What do Isham or Aquam do then? Hmm. Perhaps it is difficult to explain in human words. We are all close to the element of water, so we tend to the flow of water in the world. We allow water to make things whole, to fill cracks and flow as it ought. Essentially, we are guides of the power of water. Hmm. That means I had hoped he would be able to tell me more specific things about his power, but it was difficult to understand his explanation as it stood. You said there was water in the grass. Then could you draw it out of the grass or something like that? I do not think I can. The element of water in this world is so entwined with the others that I cannot seem to understand its flow yet. I see. 
then even if he could tell me what he meant, he wouldn't be able to use his skills either way. I turned away before annoyance showed too clearly on my face, and then caught a glimpse of movement out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> Ursa, what? Get behind me. Two wolves were crouched in the bush. The brush, the brush, the brush. Um, is should be pushed right. Okay, at the side of the path. I could not tell if more were behind them. I only had a small knife with me, but carrying my bag, I was a large enough target to intimidate them. And as we circled them cautiously, they did not seem willing to approach. Good. May I ask, what those creatures are? Wolves. They will attack weak, lone travelers if they can. Keep your guard up. Is that so? But they are also living beings. Why would they do so? At my momentarily destruction, one of the wolves rose, its eyes glittering, and aimed towards me. Now, at Uribo, who inadvertently stepped out from behind me, back you. At the force of my shout, Uribel jumped, but so did the wolves. Finally, they turned and fled back towards the reed home woods. Was that necessary? They were about to attack. Why did he not seem to understand that? Wolves are vicious if they sense weakness. You cannot let down your guard. Forgive me. It is only hard to believe that living creatures would easily harm each other in this plane. All those who live in the plane of water can feel the life of others, as water suits, mends, and connects all living beings. Because we are aware of all connections, conflicts can be calmed, so we have no desire to cause harm to others. Let's just go then. We'll spend enough time. Ah.、Uh, I reflected as I walked on that I was learning more and more about Isham, but it only made it harder for me to understand how exactly I was to live with Uribel in this world so unlike his peaceful one. Eventually. The sound on my stomach forced us to stop for a meal, a little past noon. Moving off the path for safety, we sat down in a small clearing. A small stream ran through a little ways away, bubbling. I dug out the rations I bought and handed a piece to Uribel. We had not spoken since the walk, but in great manners, finally won over my irritation. Some food. The water skin is here as well. Ah,、uh, thank you. Either he hadn't noticed my expression, or he was remaining polite because that was what all Alcrim knew how to do. But even as I thought that, a twinge of shame went through me. I had promised to treat him well, to Olaine. And to myself, my word was worth more than my sense of big. I was better than this. Ah,、uh, what is? This is wonderful. I had not known food could be so varied and flavorful. It was only ordinary travel rations, made of dry fruit and grains packed together. But the look of enjoyment on his face was genuine. You like it? It's simple fare. It is more delicious than any food I had recall ever tasting. In the elemental plants, we sustain ourselves with energy. It gives us power, 
but there is little to taste. Being able to experience the taste of food and gain energy from it, it is a wonderful experience. Thank you, Ursa. I didn't know why he was thanking me, but in the face of his honest appreciation, it was hard to feel irritated. I ended up handing him another piece. I'm glad you enjoy it. Let's take a little time to eat, and then be back on our way. We still have some ways to go. Ah,、uh, Ursa, if you don't mind me asking, while we have stopped, would you tell me a little more about yourself? Huh? I was too focused on the newness of this world before. I am sorry to have been so boorish, but you are my human bonder, whose voice I heard from the plains. I would dearly love to learn about you as well, if you are willing. Anything at all that you wish to say. Was this also his way of trying to make up after the encounter with the wolves? But. It had not been his fault that he not, did not know what this world was like. The shame I felt grew steadily, and it was true that I had not told him about me either. I sighed. There's not much to say, but let's talk about the village that I call home. I should at least tell you about my home, Silvervale. Silvervale was a small village of barely two hundred people, nestled in the valley between two plateaus. It had been a mining town producing silver for generations, until the mines were exhausted about ten years ago. But its people continued to eke out a living on the hard ground. Not wanting to abandon their homes, and neither did I, though I had not been born there. It is a strong village; it's important to me as well. You deeply care for your home, then. That seems a noble desire to me. I only do what I can to help. I am a carpenter by skill, so. Despite wanting to eat quickly, Uribel's interest was hard to deny. A little time passed as we spoke, but as I paused after one question, I unexpectedly heard something else. Voices closer than I expected. Other travelers need another new job too. Two jobs too. Uribel seemed to hear them too, but we were rather far from the road. What were they doing? Cut down Jivsky Abar. Ah, that is strange. They sound displeased.、Uh, come with me quickly. At the far side of the clearing. The unroved road was thickest around the gnarled roots of an old oak. I pulled Uribel into the brush, putting him against the roots and trying to hide his hair and brow. Okay, so it it was meant to be something of like the brush instead of the bush. Okay, the bush bush. Ursa. What is? Might as well. And why we not order? They deserve it anyway. Kicking us out like my gut feeling and Uribel's reaction would have been correct. I did not like the sound of the man's voice, and burdened by my back, aimed with only a knife. And what Uribel to protect, I could not easily fight if they meant harm. 
We do not want them to see us. Let's hope they leave. So long as you don't go soft again, use more next time. We ain't getting. What's it matter if we ain't our fault? They don't all. Oh wait. Piece of crumbs and a water skin. Someone been here? I had forgotten the water skin in my haste in grabbing Uribel. It's probably just got eaten by those wolves. You imbecile! Check around this area. If they're still around, we ain't getting seen again. I scanned around me for some sort of weapon, but there was not even a large broken branch or even stones to throw. The voices sounded more alert, and the footsteps crunching through the brush closer. Turn, damn, damn, turn around. Hmm. Then perhaps the steps came yet closer. If the man was tall enough or close enough, he could have seen Uribel's blue hair through the brush. If I leave out at him now. I might at least be able to surprise one of them. Oh, magic! A strange sound suddenly came from behind both of us and the man. It sounded almost like a water skin being squeezed. The hell was? Pastors came back for this shit. Wait, where's the? And then I distinctly heard something else strange. Splashes, inter interrupting the bubbling of the nearby stream. They went that way. Go check the stream. The sounds of the footsteps and the man's voice vanished in the direction of the stream away from us. Was someone else there? But that was too convenient. How would they have? No, I finally realized. When I look back again, that Uribel's hands were glowing. You, Uribel, did you do that? Ah,、uh, yes. Well, a little. How did you? The water skin, and the stream. Yes, they were pure water. I could feel the energy. So it was easier for me to use them. I had wanted to pull those men's attention further away, but my power still feels limited, so I could only do so much. Was that all right? Yes. That was well done. Even knowing so little about the world, after Alvin called to him and dragged him into a bush. Uribel had still tried to help me. My previous annoyance finally withered away. I humbled. I would have to apologize to him, but this was not the time. Let's get out of here before they come back this way. Ah,、uh, Ursa. I'm sorry, but I、uh, may be stuck. What? I looked more closely. The gnarled oak roots, half pushed, Uribel against to hide him, had caught on his long flowing hair. Forgive me, I may need a little time. Hold still. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, oh my, oh my, oh dear. <laughs> um. Well, uh, uh, as you can see for my、uh, <laughs> um, terrible laughing voice, this is a really, really good scene. It's a、uh, Cavadon, <laughs> yay! A Cavadon, very cute, very cute. Even though it's just her trying to、uh, untangle his hair, but that's still a Cavadon. And they're very close to each other. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I 
I I should not I should not react like this. I'm, even though I play a lot of games, but this is very cute. The space we had hid in was small. I found myself pressing against Uribel as I tried to untangle the roots from his hair as gingerly as I could. I apologize for all of this. Ah, uh, no, it's it's no issue. My apologies hadn't only been the situ for the situation we were in, but regardless of how close Uribel was, I had to concentrate. Yes, concentrate not to look at that pretty face. I guess. <laughs> Luckily, his hair was as sleek as water, flowing smoothly over my fingers. It was easy enough to shake loose once the main entangling root was free. If it had hurt at all, Uribel did not show it. I found that somehow made me feel worse. Are you? Is it all right? Ah,、uh, yes. Thank you. We were too close. I realized suddenly. Uribe's breath, that Asian breath, was warm against my cheek. And then there was the crack of a branch from afar. As if a spell had broken, we educated ourselves and ran for the road. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> the scene is great. The scene is great. I guess I just like Cavadons. <laughs> Once again, Versa, I must thank you. No, not at all. That was my fault. Having gone far enough down the road again, we'll finally stop to catch our breath. It had been undignified to be in that situation. I would also need to replace a water skin once we return to Silverville. But having gone through with it with Uribel, I sometimes, somehow, I felt a little more at ease. But I really am sorry to have been so troublesome. To avoid this happening again, is there something I should do? <sighs> yes, I should have realized. I took a spare pen from my belt pouch. And one of the green leaf pins from my hair, and motions for Uribel to turn around. Let me. Ooh, new hairstyle, very cute. Oh, I see. This, it looks new to him. Actually, that's very cute. Is it alright? It's the human style. I do not know if Asian hair can be tamed. I remembered a little too late that Ishim could change their own appearance at will. But <laughs> yes, it does not hurt at all. It is quite freeing. So this is how humans care for their appearance. It seems there is a lot I should know about living in this world. I really must learn more quickly as we go. Hmm. You'll get the hang of it, and uh, um, may I keep this pen? Sure, I have plenty more. Uh, why are both of you blushing now? It's very cute. <laughs> I decided not to ask why he looked so happy at that, or why I suddenly felt a little warmer inside as we walked on. Ooh, fluff. Fluffy fluff. Mercifully, the rest of the path from there to Silvervale was uneventful, and despite our earlier encounters, we had still managed a good time, and were approaching Silvervale as dusk fell. Ah, you have made this trip many times before, then. Yes. Usually, little trouble on this road. Today was unusual. Ah,、uh, 
Nevertheless, I believe I have learned a great deal from our encounters. So please do not feel as if they were all bad. Hmm. Remembering that I had barely been willing to talk to Uribel this morning, I found ruefully that he was right. All chatter afterwards had been much more free and open. It was unfamiliar to me, who had always made this trip alone, but it was not unwelcome. In any case, we will be there soon. I had only been able to hastily tie up Uribel's hair earlier, but it did indeed suit him. He now looked every bit like a refined foreign traveler. Now, maybe that was the right way to think about him. He was naive but kind, ignorant but eager to help, and my guest. So I would hold him to the pass of my ability, and protect him the same way as I did the folk of my village. Uh, well, we're here. Welcome to Silvervale. Okay. That should be a good end to this playthrough. Um, af um, after I uh, skip this, okay, Silver Barrel Chapter Three. Yeah, and this should be the end of this playthrough. Uh, so far, we have finished two chapters of introductions to um, um, Ursa and Uribel, and they seem to be developing quite well with the, uh, their interactions and knowing about themselves. And we got a er, Cavadon, a Cavadon uh, CG that I somehow felt too too excited for this. <laughs> No, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next chapter of Ursa Major, an Alchemia story. Bye bye.